This is Mr. Fox, manager of the facility. Gerald, sorry, with minimum security here, but proceed, Joe. I'm Detective Ryan, this is Detective Mapplethorpe. Oh, sorry, that'll be my cuffs. Mr. Stackball, open up. The Rundle's run under private contract. There'll be inquiries. Death like this is the last thing I need. And what's worse for you then, accident or murder? There's no way this was an accident. Samuel Hegarty. He was in for embezzlement. Can't we get him out of there? He deserves a little dignity, surely. Um, Reverend Waldegrave, I'm the prison chaplain. Sorry, Reverend, this is now a crime scene. Who found him? Mr. Patel and me. He was still going round. We heard the thumps, stopped the machine. I checked to see if he was still alive, of course. I'd say all the blood's from his, uh, missing bits. Missing bits? His genitals. He didn't bleed to death, he probably choked. His missing bits are halfway down his throat. Hegarty day to day. Uh, no trouble at all. Best behaviour. He was due for release in four months. We need to see his file. Any particular friends? Not that I know of. He worked with some inmates in here. On rotation. Rotation. No pun intended, one hopes. I can give you a list of his co-workers. The laundry's running shifts. That'd be useful. I found this in the sheets. Nasty. Mm. The pathologist said he was still alive when they started the dryer up. His hands were tied with a torn sheet. Gerald, they uh, need your signature for the release of the body. Of course they do. Tomorrow, we'll need to interview the inmates and your staff too. Terrible business. Terrible. Did you see much of Hegarty? Oh, a bit. Counselling, you know. Think of any reason anyone would want to murder him? No. I really can't think who would have done this. Jail's privately run. Inmates are all on their way through and out. Violent offenders? Some, but more your vehicular manslaughter, domestic flip-out types. Lots of transfers, like Hegarty, from other jails. Soft landings. Everyone's focused on getting out, getting on with their lives. Model prisoners. Obviously one of them isn't. Mm. This is his transfer photo. Samuel Hegarty, 47. The head warder, Carl Stackpole, and this guard, Ramesh Patel, they found him. Yeah, he'd been fed his own meat and two veg. Lovely. Jennifer, prior convictions. Um, sorry, Sarge, don't know. The file from the jail is pretty basic. Transfer dates and personal details. Simon's pulling the rest off. Poll search. And I'm not getting very far. I can't access his file. I spoke to criminal records. They said there's a need to no flag on it. It's restricted. Mr. Quayle is with the ACPCF. The Administrative Council of Private Correctional Facilities. Good morning, pleased to meet you. And uh, what does the ACPC do? The ACPCF. We liaise between outsourced entities and the various governments and judicial bodies. Bureaucracy, curse of the age, I'm afraid. You won't be upset if I agree, not dear. Files you requested? Wrapped in red tape, I bet. No, not at all. The only requests I have are that you sign the confidentiality agreement, keep them safe, and return them to us when you're done. Sounds reasonable. Hagen. Hagerty was an alias. His real name was Samuel Hagen. 
He was under an internal protection order. Just before his transfer to Arundel, he had served five years of an eight-year sentence for carnal knowledge of a minor. He was a pedophile. Is that right? The unforgivable crime, eh? Well, that could make sense of the phone call I've just had. Hmm? From Mr Fox at the prison. He's very concerned that this should be kept as quiet as possible. Why? Well, according to Quayle, the prison administration, when I was told of Haggerty's real case history. Well, I think Mr Fox's concerns are more about his facility's reputation and retaining his company's government accreditation. Yeah, and his own job. Yeah, possibly. Hmm. Fair enough, a murder on his watch is not going to win him any points, is it? True. Now, what about the team? Are they going to be, now that they know about Hegarty's history, able to put a lid on their distaste and get on with it? They will do their job. If they don't, they'll have me to answer to. Actually, a word from their superintendent wouldn't go astray. United Front? Wouldn't hurt. The guy who killed him is already in jail, so why are we even wasting our time with this crap? Yeah, I mean, chopping off the old equipment's the best way of dealing with these bastards, if you ask me. Unfortunately, Wilton, you're not being asked to provide your expert opinion. Given the animosity that so often arises when dealing with these people... What, rock spiders? I thought I'd better make it quite clear. No fear or favour. This is a murder victim. If anyone has any problems with that, we can always find them something else to do. Thank you, Senior Sergeant. Yeah, I've got a problem with it. What's this protection order crap, Sergeant? Higgity slash Hagen was transferred uh, on the recommendation of the Sentencing Review Board. He's placed under a new name with a sealed file, his original charge to be confidential. According to our Mr Quayle, Hegarty was a big success story. Rehabilitated, remorseful, he'd requested and been approved for chemical castration. Cop the real McCoy instead. This Fox guy who runs a prison, did he know anything about this? No, no one was supposed to know. This was part of an experiment giving uh, rehabilitated sex offenders a chance at having a new life by changing their identity before release. But if someone found out? Well, there's your motive. Yep, exactly. And that's our starting point from which we now proceed. You've got the list. Check the inmates. Maybe someone recognised him. Bit hard, Sarge. Long hair, beard. He arrived in disguise, pretty much. Well, nevertheless, that is our starting point. I want you to run computer checks and do interviews in the jail. OK, I'll run computer checks. Uh, Simon's across that. You and Matt are the leads on this case. You do the jail. I can't believe they didn't inform me. It's outrageous. Well, it might work for you in the end. Your bosses can't blame you if they didn't tell you what the deal was. Well, I'm surprised you didn't pick him. As far as I can see, these blokes may as well have it tattooed across their foreheads. I'm an administrator. I don't have time to get to know these men personally. If you want a closer perspective, speak to my staff. Yes. I make it my business to try to get to know all of the prisoners. Even the Catholics. So what can you tell us about Sam Hegarty? Essentially, Sam had become a better man. He was reformed. Reformed? Now, Reverend, did Sam Hegarty tell you why he was in jail? Well, I saw his file, of course. Well, come on, Rev, it's not like you're bound by the rules of the confessional, is it? I still have a duty of care. I can't just... Listen, Sam Hegarty's dead, and our job is to find out who killed him, no matter what he's done. All right. Yes, he told me why he was in jail. He also told me that he was truly remorseful. And I believed him and was happy to support him. All right, did you mention this to anyone else? Anyone at all? No. No one. You are on the same laundry shift as Hegarty? Yes, but I was straight back to my cell when I was done. Sam was finishing up on some sheets. Sam, did you know him well? Not really. Look. I'm due for release at the end of the week. I've done nearly seven years. I've still got lots of debts to pay. People I've got to set things straight with on the outside. I just want to get out of here, do that, and start again. Why would I want to hurt anyone and screw that up? Hagerty seemed OK. You hear him crying sometimes. And he's sleep. Crying? 
Apart from that, I can't tell you anything interesting. You knew him? You get to know most people. Or, uh, you're acquainted at least. With him? Only slightly. I can't help you. Thank you, Mr. Vanderberg. Thank you, Detective. Jenny? Detective Mapplethorpe. Of course. Sorry. You know him? An old fraud case. I think I need some coffee. I guess he was very quiet. Yeah, not another model prisoner. Were there any other incidences, like fights or arguments? Or any possible links between the broken glass, the shiv, and anyone working in the laundry crew? That is possible. Stackpole broke up an argument in the gymnasium about a month ago. A window got broken. He made them clean it up. Supervised, of course. So who helped with the clean-up? Don't remember precisely. But the CCTV tape should still be available. What about tapes on the laundry? The camera in there broke down. It hasn't been replaced. Budget cuts. Bad call. Especially if you're Hegarty. Have you been drinking? Uh, I had I had a big night, man. Oh, big issue. Do not sign out a gun or a set of car keys today. You're the scriber. That's an order. Ma'am, I am fine. Look, Simon, I'm well aware that you came very close to being shot recently. I'd probably be trying to dull the memory myself, but an order, detective. Look at him, you can tell. It's in his eyes. He's lucky I wasn't in jail. I'd be number one suspect. After me, son. After me. The tapes from the broken window incident in the prison gym are being couriered over. Sarge will be in any minute. He's just on the phone. All right. Yeah. All right, look at this. Troy Lucas, one of my prison cross-checks. His sister has got two daughters five years ago. These two were Hegarty's last two victims. Yeah. If he's on the tape of the glass being broken, I'd say we have our prime suspect. But how the hell could Lucas have recognised Hegarty? He would have been inside when he got caught, only TV grabs and papers to go by. Maybe Troy Lucas wasn't the one who recognised him. Maybe it was his sister. The visiting rooms, their open plan. <laughs> You wouldn't know to look at them. But they're still not over it. 
after five years, they have dreams. Yeah, we're, we're sorry to bring all this up again. Their uh, father left. He, he said that he felt guilty. He couldn't face us. <laughs> he felt guilty. <laughs> you know, Hagen was due for a lease soon. Well, that's one thing I don't have to worry about anymore. Oh, oh I, don't, I don't know why I feel so upset. It's some um, relief, probably. Four days he had them. We never found out everything that he did to them. They were too traumatised to tell. Um, thank you both for letting me know. So, um, just one more thing, Mrs Pillsbury. We need to ask you um, to recognise this man. How dare you? How dare you think that I wouldn't? Well, you think hair makes a difference, a beard? Nine days I sat in that courtroom looking at those eyes of his through those jam jars. Sorry. That man raped my children. How could you think that I wouldn't know him? So you didn't see him in the jail when you visited your brother? No. What are you saying? He was there. He'd been transferred. So you didn't tell your brother that you'd seen him then? Oh. Oh, God. He raped your two nieces five years ago. We think your sister recognised him during one of her visits. She told you who he was. Maybe she asked you to kill him or maybe you did it off your own. No, I didn't kill him. We could understand it if you did, after what he put those little girls through. How old were they? Eight and ten? Seven and nine. I want a lawyer. OK, Troy. Interview suspended. And you people stay away from my sister. She's been through enough. Right, you go near her again, I will bloody kill somebody. I swear I will! Sarge, hey, hey, he's a tape from the prison gym. Lucas was there. He helped clean up the broken glass. That's a solid link to the weapon motive opportunity and means I'd say it's good enough to hand over to the DPP. He did a pretty good impression of being surprised just then. Yeah, he did a good impression of warning us off his sister. We pass it on, sign it over to the DPP. Where's Sparky? Got his evening Pilates class. <laughs> you know, I believe Lucas's sister. She didn't tell him about Hegarty. So, he recognised him himself? No. I saw the look on his face when we told him. What do you think, Matt? Well, I guess we just let the courts decide. That is exactly right. Job well done. Go home. Night. No. Night. No. See you, Matty. There's no need to patch me through. Can you just let Wolfie know that I'm going to be late? I'm not feeling too well. Great, thank you. I thought this matter was done with. Lucas has been charged and transferred. Some loose ends we need to tie up. This has already attracted enough interest, Detective. What loose ends? I can't discuss that with you. I need to speak to one of your inmates. Mr. Vanderberg. Detective. Thank you. If you can just wait outside. This interview is not to be monitored. Instructions of the DPP. Thank you. I hope you'll excuse my slightly cryptic phone call, Jenny. Your phone call was threatening, not cryptic. 
And your charm won't work this time, Brian. What do you want? Cheers, mate. Reverend Waldegrave wants a meeting. I thought the Hegarty Hagen matter was with the DPP now, Sarge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get the distinct impression you're not too happy about them. Not exactly, but uh, no one is. No, but if Waldegrave wants to talk to us, let's see what it's about, shall we? And since Jennifer is off sick, you're it. I get out in four months. Did six of my eight years. The world doesn't stop when you're inside, Jenny. Everything's gone. The kids don't want to know me. You killed their mother. Oh, be nice, Jenny. They pay us for the work we do in here, but pay. <laughs> I'll be lucky to come out of here with a few hundred dollars. Tell me something I might care about. Your future. I want a month's bond, a couple of months' rent, some spending money on top. Five grand all up. I thought you might like to organise it for when I get out. For, uh... Old time's sake. Or else what? What are you doing here? I thought you were sick. She's visiting Brian Vandenberg, aren't you? I checked his file. He's not in for fraud. He's in for manslaughter. Maybe you should listen to this. Old time's sake. Or else what? Or else I tell everyone how you were sleeping with me during the time I killed my wife. That's not true. You think anyone will care about the time frame? They'll just latch onto the headline. Wife killer's cute cop lover. They like a little bit of uh, alliteration. You better do me this favour, Jenny. They're more of the same. What do I do? How much of what he says is true? Simon, I was a rookie uniform. I met a smooth guy in a bar. Lasted a couple of months. I found out he was married and then I finished it. When did he kill his wife? About eight months later or something. But now he's saying that... Oh, shit. Tell Wolfie. I can't do that. Yeah, you can't not do that. You give this guy one single thing he wants. Yeah, yeah join her. Ah, uh, yes, Sarge, we're there now. No, no, just, uh, just traffic. Yeah, we're in there now. Cheers. Tell him. He's right. When Kelly came to see me, told me you talked with her, it made me reconsider my position. We haven't met Mrs. Pillsbury, I think Detective Sparks and Detective... You accused me of trying to get my baby brother to kill that man. Did you? No. All my brother wants is to get on with his life. Why can't you leave him alone? He killed two young men, being stupid in his car. One moment and, and in his whole life. But to kill someone with intent that... That is just not Troy. He just wouldn't do that. It is not in him. She's telling the truth. And so is Troy. I haven't told you everything I knew about Sam Hegarty. Hagen. His name's Hagen. I've been busy protecting this institution. It's good works, all its promise. At the expense of people and the truth. The man was a pedophile. Yes, we know. But what you don't know is that he was really repentant. Oh. He hadn't found God, but he had come to a moral crossroads and he'd chosen the more difficult path. I believe it was that choice that led to his death. Wife killers killed. There were three shocks, really. The first one, I found out that he was married. The second one, when I read in the newspaper that he'd murdered his wife. And the third, when they reduced the charge to manslaughter. Mm. It's a 
provocation defence. He said that she had humiliated and taunted him with her affairs, her lovers. He's a bloody hypocrite. Which is why the statute is no longer on the books. It's supposed to protect battered wives. Or lovers. An assurance, Jennifer, that it happened exactly the way you've told me. Absolutely. All right. Leave it with me. But, Sergeant... No. Leave it with me. Yeah. Sarge. You're not going to believe this. Hegarty didn't operate as a loner. He was part of an internet-based pedophile ring. He told Reverend Waldegrave that when he was released, he was going to expose other members of the group. Did he tell anyone else about his intentions? According to Waldegrave, just him and his counsellor at his previous jail. Because they're priests. So, seems likely everything pointed to Troy Lucas because it was meant to point there. He was set up. And so were we. That. Yesterday we got told to make sure you didn't sign out a firearm. Waverley says he's been hitting the source. What's that all about? I had a drink. Big deal. Maybe you need to talk to the shrink. I don't need counselling. Oh, Superman, eh? I need it after I nearly got shot. I'm fine. Do you know how many cops go through their whole career without having something like that happen to them? Having a gun shoved in their face? About 99%. Check the stats. It's not going to happen again, son. To clarify, you're setting out now to disprove a case we've just handed over to the DPP. We're talking to the priest who counselled Hegarty at his previous jail. Can you let Mr Quayle know that we'll need more information regarding Hegarty's transfer process? And call the DPP with the glad tidings? Yeah, better now than in the middle of the court case. Marginally, yes. Catholic this time says our toddler touching was quite open with him about his intention to name other members of the ring. Oh, well, if that got out, there'd be some very nervous people out there. Oh, if we were set up, it has to be linked to the transfer process. Hegarty was sent to Arundel because Lucas was there. So that Lucas could take the fall for the murder. Hmm. You're suggesting someone in administration was behind this? No, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm asking for information. Because just that... I just can't believe that... Well, as you say, there's no point in speculating. I'll organise a spreadsheet with the transfer. Who does what, who recommends what, who signs off on things. We didn't even know. Yes, Gerald, you made that perfectly clear. You did facilitate the transfer, Mr Fox. We facilitate all reasonable requests, and on the surface, anyway, this was a perfectly reasonable request. I'll get my staff to put together a fully comprehensive report for you as soon as possible. Thank you. It'll be a big list, a lot of people involved in the transfer. Oh, we'll get straight onto it. As soon as we've talked to Troy Lucas again. Good. I'll be off the radar for an hour or so. Something I need to take care of. I took the advice and told the Sarge. Yeah? Mm. I figured as much when I saw you in his office before. It's good. Matt, I'm sorry I didn't tell you the truth about Vanderberg when we first saw him. Your business, Jen. Private. You had no need to discuss it with me. Well, if I had have come clean in the beginning, I might not be in this mess now. Maybe not. I was just so thrown to see him, you know. I can imagine. Hey, we've all got things we don't want to talk about. Secrets we keep. Yeah, I guess we do. Forget about it. Hey, that was a nice trick with the hidden recorder. 
learn that in fraud. One thing I know about Brian, big mouth, small brain. Thought you might have picked that up from his file. <laughs> What's this? Evidence of coercion. It could cost you your early release. I don't know what you mean. You think anyone will care about the time frame? They'll just latch onto the headline. Wife killer's cute cop lover. <laughs> Crafty bitch. She'll never use that. It'd still ruin her career. Shut up and listen to me. Jennifer Mapplethorpe is no longer a young uniformed copper. She is a detective senior constable in homicide. She has colleagues who care for her. People that could make your life on the outside a misery. Think about that and make a decision. Goodbye from me. Don't ever contact her again. Mr. Stackpole. Let's come at this from another angle. Did you notice anyone taking a particular interest in you over the last few months? Since Hegarty came to the prison. Not really, no. Notice anyone keeping tabs on him? Any unusual changes in work shifts or anything like that? What is this? Are you... You're looking at someone else now. Was Hegarty pally with anyone? Inmate or staff? Jesus, God, thank you. Look, all I can tell you again is I didn't kill him. The question, Troy? No, he wasn't pally with anyone. As far as I could tell, he spent most of his time praying in the chapel. Look, everything seems to be coming back to these priests. It would make more sense if Hegarty's victims were little boys. Sparks, eh? You guys have talked to them. What do you think? They just seem pretty straight up to me. Yeah, not to me. But then I never trust men in frocks. If anyone's thinking of going home tonight, forget it. There's been another death at the jail. It looks like a nasty accident, but given the circumstances... Yeah, of course. ...in here. Who's on shift? Eight of us, including Mr. Stackpole. And in the office? Mr. Fox and his secretary. All right, thank you. Crushed windpipe. Pathologist said that the bar dropped down onto his throat. Could have been an accident, could have been deliberate. Cameras? Nothing. Someone switched them off. And who'd have access to do that? It could have been anyone. The door to the switch room was forced open. This place really is minimum security, isn't it? Sarge? Do you have a list of your staff or on tonight, This isn't a coincidence. Say nothing, just work the same with Madden Duncan. I'll be back. It's linked. We called on Vanderberg earlier today. Whoever killed him must have thought that he'd given us information. Yeah, who's we? Us. I called on him, uh, so did Mapplethorpe. In connection with the case? In connection with his own situation, yes. And you felt a sudden need to leave the crime scene and come and tell me that these visits had taken place? In case they came up. And you think that someone panicked and decided that this Vanderberg character had to be silenced, in which case there could be a problem? Mm, yeah, it's possible. I'll, um... I'll keep you informed. Do. How long is this going to go on for? I've had to draft in extra staff. It'll take as long as it takes. 
What have you got? Four guards were in the dining room with inmates. Two were doing cell checks. So basically, Patel and Stackpole are the only ones unaccounted for. Yeah, Patel says that he was sneaking a cigarette in the exercise area at the time. So Matt's gone to get Stackpole now. Jennifer, a quick word. When you came back to see Vanderberg, who saw you? Who talked to you? Um, Fox and Stackpole. When I came, the only person I spoke to apart from Vanderberg was Stackpole. He met me, saw me through. He is the common denominator. You think he killed Hegarty? Stackpole's not here. He's supposed to be on duty, but he's gone. Mr. Fox. So, you think about what I said? I've been trying to avoid doing too much thinking lately. Join us, Fern. No, he's driving, Stanley. We'll be there in ten. No, pull over now. Stackpole's address, what is it? It's all right, Stan, I heard it. Turn around, we're going to Carl Stackpole's house. Yes, Please, we're looking for your husband. Oh. Is he here? Yeah, he is, but Where just is take he? a minute. You just can't see him. Oh, Marge, he might... Which one is he? be charged with possession and distribution of child pornography. I'll die in jail. They'll kill me. Do you like because you're a water or a rock spider? You know what it's like. How it gets away from you. It starts out as curiosity. And then pictures. Kids. Forget that you ever existed. Who else? They'd be better off. Because you're just a middleman, aren't you? You made sure the frame up went as planned. You pushed for not fixing the camera in the laundry. You made sure Lucas and Hegarty were on the same shift. You made sure Lucas was there when the window was broken. Made sure we got the tapes. You set Lucas up, and then you murdered Hegarty. You're not high enough up the ladder to have arranged the transfer. No, someone else did that. Who was it, Carl? Pillsbury just wanted a word. A word of thanks, actually. I, I just wanted to say thank you for looking out for my brother and, and doing the right thing by him. He's made a few mistakes, but um, anyway, I just wanted to say thanks. No, just, you know, doing our job. Well, Troy's uh, charges have been withdrawn, and so he gets his early release. Oh, great. Yeah, so, anyway, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for coming. It's really not a problem. Um, why don't I show you to the lift? Also, I'm really sorry that I hit you. Ah, it's all right. Didn't hurt. Really? I hit you pretty hard. Well, must have deserved it then, eh? 
And Lassie runs in and barks, cue merry laughter. <laughs> Do not let her thank you go to your head. Life goes on, as does death. Domestic homicide witness statements, please, Simon and Jennifer. Sarge. Hmm. Brian Vanderberg. We both know what happened. I made him a target by talking to him. We both talked to him. And he made himself a target by leaving that message on your answering machine, which forced us to talk to him. And now he's dead. That is not your fault, Jennifer. And it is not my fault. The man murdered his wife and got off on a technicality. Things have a way of evening out like that. So, put it behind you on a new day. All right? All right. Thank you. <laughs> 